My name is Keith Jeffries. I'm a history teacher at Uniontown High School. I am also a graduate of Waynesburg College. I'm doing my oral report from More Fact and Folklore by John L. O'Hara on the early memories of Waynesburg College football. Personally, I probably would not have attended this college if it was not for football. So I believe that it is important to go over the achievements that the college football team has had throughout the years in its existence. Hopefully throughout my report I will be able to give an accurate view of the past, the present, and hopefully the future of Waynesburg College football. More Fact and Folklore by John O'Hara Excerpt Football Memories there will not be too many around, of course, who can recall firsthand the intriguing story of Waynesburg College's first touchdown and the fact that it was literally stolen. It came in 1898 in a game against West Virginia when the late Dr. Jesse Hazlitt purloined the pigskin from the grasp of a Mountaineer halfback and scooted for Waynesburg's first score. The play was entirely legal and the score counted although West Virginia regarded the game as practice, although Waynesburg records showed the Mountaineers won. Waynesburg's first team, incidentally, got faculty sanction only after it was pointed out that the player coach, Thomas D. Whittles, later a noted Presbyterian minister, was preparing for the ministry. In another early incident, sometime about 1912, a Waynesburg team was journeying to West Virginia by then adventurous mode of horseless carriage when one of the cars was halted by a flat tire just over the Mason-Dixon line. Two of the players, noted for their appetites as well as their playing ability, Don Sprague and Ray Howard, heeded the sage advice to follow their noses when the trail led to a nearby farmhouse from whence had come the aroma of freshly baked apple dumplings. Training regulations were not strict then as now, and besides, the coach was in another car that had gone ahead, so the two enjoyed a sumptuous repast of dumplings only an hour before kickoff time. Needless to say, they spent most of the afternoon on the bench after their first few efforts found them breathless and belching apple dumplings like artillery cannons. Those who played at Waynesburg during the Depression era of the 1930s will never forget the frugal fare the football team served in the old track house on College Street and the monotony of beans and bread one day and bread and beans the next. Nor by the same token will they ever forget the welcome break they got when a calf somehow escaped from a cattle truck near the campus and was rounded up by Bill Bringis. It was slaughtered before the owner could be found and served up at one or two subsequent meals which to this day haven't been forgotten by those who were in on the feast. The prize for repartee must be awarded to Ray Williams, who came to Waynesburg by way of Martin's Ferry in the mid-1920s and was acting captain in the game in which Waynesburg was being crushed by Georgetown University. Late in the contest, Georgetown had just scored yet another touchdown, and with all the formality of an official in a Harvard-Yale game, the referee addressed Williams in a starchy voice. What do you wish to do, kick or receive, Captain Williams? And to which Williams gave the classic reply of Waynesburg will receive from now on, implying, of course, that Georgetown will keep on scoring. These incidents, of course, are only a few random samples out of the folklore of Waynesburg College football. There are scores, perhaps hundreds, of other such incidences lurking in the memories of the players and the fans. That, incidentally, is the key to what makes homecoming worthwhile Memories, they're wonderful, from October 1st, 1964.